everybody. It's Mr. Cutting here, and this is the recap video for Mind Blowing Mondays uh, for the first Mind Blowing Monday, which had fractions, percentages, and number sense. Um, if you were taking this Mind Blowing Monday and you were like, "Wait, I should, I should remember this. I don't know how to do this. This is a something I don't want." It, yeah, this is like kind of like a thing from a super long time ago. It's kind of a basic thing, but it's something that people forget all the time. And that, that's why we're doing this. So like we, we know if you didn't uh, remember how to do this stuff, we kind of expected that you forgot it. That's something a lot of kids forget. So don't feel bad about that. Um, it is super important though. Th these are kind of the fundamental building blocks for uh, a lot of the harder math concepts we're going to cover in the class. Okay. So going way back, fractions, percents, decimals, they're all ways to represent having a part of something rather than a whole thing. So you can have 40% of something, okay? If you're given a percentage, taking it and turning it into a fraction or a decimal is relatively straightforward. Well, how do you make it a decimal? You, you might remember like, the, whoa, whoa, like just move the decimal place over to, so 40% is 0 0.40. How do you make it into a fraction? Whoa out of 100, it's 40 out of 100. You could reduce that fraction by dividing the numerator and the denominator both by 10 to get four, oops, four tenths. Or you could even jump right away and say, oh, I could have divided them both by 20 and get two tenths. Reducing that fraction. All right. So if you start with the percentage, it's relatively easy to make it into a decimal or fraction. If you start with a decimal, 0.51, Easy to make it into a percent. Well, just do the opposite. 51%. And then how do you make that into a fraction? Make it over 100. The one that's a little bit harder is if you start with a fraction and you want to make it into a percent or a decimal. And this isn't always straightforward to do. You might have to do like long division. There's complicated things that you can do. Um, but sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's not. What I want you to keep in mind is that it's always easy to do this. easy to take a decimal and make it into a fraction and take a percent and make it into a fraction. You, you can make everything into fractions and that, and that might be your best bet in terms of when you're trying to compare different quantities. Okay. So to give you a little example, my kind of general rule of thumb, this doesn't always work, but when you're comparing quantities, having them all in the same form is a lot of times the best strategy. So when I'm trying to see which of these is biggest and which is in the middle and which is smallest and I'm comparing a percent fraction and a decimal, it might be helpful to get them all into fraction form. Okay? If you can do this without doing that, cool. But if you want like a technique that will likely help you getting them all in the same form and maybe getting them all in fraction form might help. Why don't you take 30 seconds and try and see which of these you think is biggest, smallest, in the middle. Cool? Go for it. Pause, 30 seconds. Okay. So if real quick, you put them all in fraction form the easiest way, I put 29% is 29 over 100, 3 eighths was already a fraction, 0.512, I put it as 512 over 1,000. It starts to get my brain thinking about comparing these. Hopefully, you can look at this right away and say this is the only one that's greater than a half. So this is definitely going to be the largest one. When you're comparing these two, there's lots of different approaches here. The problem is the denominators are very different, so it's a little tricky to compare those fractions. The way my brain went here, at 3 eighths, yeah, 3 out of 8, that's more than 2 slices. Right? If you have a pizza with 8 slices and you get 3 of them, and a pizza with 10 slices and you get 3 of them, you're going to have more pizza if you get the 3 slices out of the pizza with 8 slices, totally. 3 tenths is the same as 30 one hundredths, and 30 one hundredths is definitely more than 29. That's where my brain went. Again, this isn't a straightforward process. I'm just thinking about what I know about fractions, percents, and decimals to try and compare those. So the order that they were actually written in here is the correct order. Okay. Cool. Um, just something to keep in mind, fractions are your friend. Okay, fractions are your friend. Everybody knows that. In case you've got fractions, your friend. Relying on fractions, knowing how to work with fractions is going to help you in this class a ton. Okay, so just really quick, 
How do you add fractions? Well, adding is the hard one. Multiplying is the easy one. Why is multiplying easy? You do top times top, bottom times bottom. Why is adding hard? Because you need a common denominator. How do you get a common denominator? You look for a least common multiple for the denominators. So what's the smallest thing that four, three, and two all go into? Well, something that works is 12. One half is the same as six twelfths. If you couldn't figure that out, what do you multiply two by to get 12? Six, so multiply the top by six. One third times four times four is four twelfths. One quarter times three times three is three twelfths. Once you get a common denominator, how do you add fractions? You just add the tops. Six twelfths plus four twelfths plus three twelfths is 13 twelfths. So adding and subtracting, you need to get a common denominator. Multiplying or dividing is more straightforward. Yeah, no need for a common denominator. A couple other things. How do you do 20% off? Like if you have a 20% off coupon, a couple ways to do it. Easiest way to do it is to say, you have 20% off. Oh yeah, by the way, I was buying a super old school, awesome calculator. Um, if you have 20% off, how much are you actually paying? You're not paying 20% of the price, you're paying 80% of the price. How do you do 80% of a number? You do 0 0.80 times that number. Okay, type that in your calculator. Oh, my calculator ran out of battery. Oh, no. Don't worry. I have this one. Do, do, do. Cool. So you pay $1,080. Cool. Last thing, really quick. Um, if you're just trying to compare quantities involving exponents, and you're thinking 3 to the 10th or 10 to the 3rd, which is bigger, Bigger exponents matter a lot more than having a bigger number on the bottom, which we call the base. So having this big exponent is going to make this one way bigger than this one. Okay, That's just a general thing. Is 5 to the 100th bigger? Or 100 to the 5th? It's 5 to the 100th. The thing with the bigger base is going to be bigger as a general, or sorry, the bigger exponent is going to be bigger as a general rule. Um, if you want to actually test this out, what's 10 to the third? Well, it's just 10 times 10 times 10. Thousand. What's 3 to the 10th? Go to your calculator, type in 3 to the 10th power. It's 59,000. Okay, so it, it's, it's way bigger than 1,000. So that's just a good thing to know. Again, there's exceptions. It's not always true, but in general, Having a bigger exponent is more important than having a bigger base. Okay. Uh, I'm going to pause there. I hope this reminded you about some stuff with fractions, percentages, number sense. Um, cool. Thanks for watching.